Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new video where I'm going to be showing you all of the projects and assignments I had to complete during my first year of university majoring in computer science. So those of you that are new here, I'm 18 years old, I just finished my first year of computer science, and throughout computer science, what we were doing was learning Python and Java, so kind of some fundamentals of programming, and you guys are going to see that throughout this video. Now if you guys are new here, I post videos like this explaining and talking about my experience as a computer science student, and I also do all kinds of tutorials mainly on the Python programming language that will definitely help you guys get ahead in your courses. So make sure to subscribe if you're not already. So with that being said, let's get into the video and look at all of the assignments and projects I had to do throughout my first year. All right, so the first assignments and projects I'm gonna show you are from my first programming class, which was called ITI 1120. And it was basic Python programming and just kind of an introduction to computer science and programming in general. This was probably the easiest class I've ever taken. Almost, I wanna consider it throughout high school as well in that consideration of classes. Uh, I did not work very hard in this course at all. I finished most of the assignments the day that they were assigned. Uh, and again, that's not to brag, it's just to really tell you that how simple this course actually was. If you guys do any programming outside of school, you will be more than fine in your first programming class. So this is the first assignment that we had to do. I'm not really gonna go through it much because it's super basic and really boring. Essentially, we just had to create a, a ton of very basic functions that answered like super simple questions. And at this point, they didn't even teach us like loops for most things. And if you used a loop that was like advanced, um, so you guys get the point, like draw a car. This was the most advanced one. We had to draw a car using the turtle graphics module. CAD cashier calculates the change in Canadian dollars that a user should receive because in Canada, we don't have one cent. So it has to round everything to five. Just really basic stuff like that. And that was assignment one. Now, assignment two uh, was not much more difficult, but I will open it up here for you. And it was an increasing split tester. But essentially what an increasing split tester did was given any number. So like type in like a 10 digit number or something, then you give it a split and the split will be the number at which it's split. So for example, if you had a, like a 10 length um, number and you put a split of two, then every two digits would be split off and it would check if those two digits um, like in order were increasing. I'm actually going to run the program for you guys to show you how this works, but this is all of the code. Again, really straightforward. What is your name? Tim, would you like to uh, put a number in? Yes, enter a positive number. So I do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I give it a split of, let's say, four. Then we see we get a sequence of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this sequence is increasing because, well, this number is smaller than this one. And you can go through and mess with that program and you see how that kind of works. So that was part one of assignment two. All right, on to assignment three. Now this one was a card game, not super difficult, but definitely more advanced than some of the other stuff. And I'll show you how the card game works now by running the program. Uh, but I think the point of this assignment was to get you comfortable using lists. All right, so this is a rummy game. It's like a different rummy game, but let's see the standard deck has 52 cards, 13 ranks, four suits. Would you like to change the number of cards by changing the number of ranks? I'm just gonna say no, but you can do that if you want to. Uh, here you're playing with a deck of 52 cards as your starting hand. Welcome to round one. Please roll the dice. So you roll the dice. It's just simulating a card game for you essentially. And then what you have to do is look at these, which are a representation of cards and figure out whether you have like, I don't know what it's called, uh, but you're trying to create like groupings of cards to get rid of cards from your hand. So I think I can like, do you have a sequence of three or more cards? of the same suit or two or more of a kind? I think I do, so I'll just say yes. Um, let's see, what ones would I even have? 110, 410, those would be the same card. So if I do that, then it removes those two cards and I can just keep going until I don't have any more sequences or pairs to remove. So assignment four is where things got slightly more difficult and at least some of my classmates struggled quite a bit. I didn't find this one that difficult, but again, I'm me, <laughs> so yeah. So anyways, what this one is like kind of like a social networking kind of thing where there's these massive lists of uh, actually not. Well, this one would be one of friends. So like zero is friend with 100, zero is friend with 101. And you can see that this list is something like what, like 10,000 lines long. And it just has a pair of all these different friends. And essentially your program has to answer a bunch of different questions, looking through the network and doing it in a certain time complexity. 
So the point of this was to teach you like binary search trees or not binary search trees, sorry, just binary search uh, as opposed to linear search and different ways of kind of being a bit more efficient with some of your code because some of this stuff can take a long time. So if I go to the, to the bottom here, this is the main line of the program and I'll run it for you guys to get an idea of exactly how it works before.py. So enter the name of the file. In this case, I am just gonna use big.txt like that. And then what it says is, uh, the average number of friends is 19.78 in this social network. The maximum number of friends that any person has is 347. There are one people with 347 friends and their ID is ID zero. Now pick a number at random. That number is 43. Let's see how many people have that many friends. There's 119 people with 43 or more friends. Uh, there's nobody that knows everybody. We are now ready to recommend a friend for a user you specify. So this is like a friend recommendation system. The way it works is just, it finds like the amount of friends in common and then pick someone or something like that. I don't remember. Let's do like ID four for the user with ID four. We recommend the user with ID 339. This is because users four and 339 have two common friends and user four does not have more common friends than anyone else. So honestly, this one was a bit more interesting. Um, I found this one more cool kind of shows you how like the Facebook network, all that kind of stuff. Uh, works on like a very, very, very basic level. And now time to go into assignment five. So assignment five is now again, just more, more functions. I'm pretty sure actually, let me go down here. Um, oh no, this one was like a dictionary uh, thing. So the way that this worked is there's a bunch of, if I can find it here, uh, like dictionaries and it's like a word lookup system or something. Um, I don't remember how this works to be honest. I think I'm just gonna have to run the code and see. Uh, so let's run a five part one and see what we get. So, all right. So now enter the name of the file. In this case, I'll do war and peace dot txt. Um, it's going to open up the file, read in every single line it says enter one or more words separated by spaces or Q to quit. So what this is going to do this, I just got a quick refresher here is you're going to type in words and then it's going to find the lines in the file that have all of those different words. Now, the point of this was to be using dictionaries and sets so that things happen very, very quickly. And you kind of get an idea of the time complex, the difference between a dictionary and something like a list, for example, because we're reading in like tens of thousands of lines of text. So I do like hello uh, and my or something like that. Uh, the words you enter do not coexist in the same line. Okay, let's just do like hello and see the word hello is not in the file. Okay, this is great. Let's try. Um, I don't even know what like a common phrase is. Let's do the. So these are all of the lines that the exists on. Obviously, like almost every line in the file. If I do the and my, then you can see that all of these lines are the ones that contain those two words together. If I do like this is mine, um, then these are the three lines that contain those three words, not necessarily in that order. And if I do Q, then I can quit. And that is kind of how this works. Now, part two of this assignment was just understanding a little bit more about objects. So we had to create all these different objects uh, and just use some basic Python, uh, what do you call it, like methods and stuff like that. But that was kind of it for all of the first programming class. Very, very basic. And again, you guys get it that it's just introducing you to the Python programming language. So now it is time to go over to the Java course, which got a little bit more interesting uh, with some more in different kind of projects. All right, so now time to talk about my second programming class, which I took last semester, my second semester in computer science, and this was a Java programming course. So essentially the point of this one was to kind of teach you about interfaces, programming structure, object-oriented design, and some more advanced computer science topics. They did not really teach Java syntax whatsoever. It was just computer science, like, course two taught in Java. So you were kind of assumed to have known the Java syntax, which most people did not. And you had to learn on your own. And then they just kind of gave you a bunch of assignments and labs and all that. And you just did it. Now, this was definitely a more challenging program class. Again, not too, not crazy difficult in my eyes, but they also taught us about data structures and things like uh, breadth first search and uh, like tree like hash maps and trees and all that kind of stuff and binary search trees and more theoretical things as opposed to really practical programming in my opinion 
Now, there's a lot of assignments here and there's a ton of code, so I'm not going to go through all of them because the way that you code in Java is with tons of different classes. If you guys aren't aware, these projects took a lot longer to complete. Usually I had to work on them over a few days or maybe even a few weeks, but I will run some of them so you guys get an idea of what I created. Now, the first assignment, and this one was like within the first month of being in this class, was just to recreate our assignment three from our ITI 1120 class, which was in Python. So essentially that rummy game that I showed you, exact same thing just ran in Java. So if I do, I'll just do yes here and pick four ranks. Uh, and you can see here that we get really the same kind of thing. Just deck is a little bit different. Um, same game as before. So I'm not really going to go through this that much. That was assignment one. Uh, assignment two was dealing with array lists and breadth first search. Now I can't actually run this code for you because it runs on unit tests, which I don't have, but essentially what it was meant to do was find the shortest possible solution to what's known as a lights out game, which I'm going to show you in just one second as a graphical representation, because that's what our third project was. So our third project was essentially using all of the code from the second project that we created and making a GUI using Swing and Java. So let me run this one for you guys right now uh, and you guys will get an idea of what I mean by this. Okay, so when I run this, now you can see that we get a nice, beautiful little GUI that pops up here that is not resizable, uh, that allows us to play this game called Lights Out. Now, the way that Lights Out works is you try to essentially get all of the lights on this board to be lit up in the shortest amount of steps. Now, you can see it shows the steps in the bottom corner, and this is actually way harder than it looks. Now, the challenging part with this is we had to make the solution solver for this. So essentially, what we had to do is be able to put solution and then after running some crazy algorithm that actually takes a really long time to run, that's why this is still going, it's going to show you the lit up uh, steps that you need to take to well complete this game. So just give this one second and then we should hopefully see it. All right, so after running that and you can see it took a fair amount of time, it tells me what I need to click to actually complete this game. So I'll go ahead and click on those. Um, I made this, it's kind of hard to see like which ones you need to click on, but if you just go ahead and follow it, then you can see that you can complete the game. It says, congratulations, you won in 21 steps. You want to play again? Uh, sure, let's play again. And then if you go random, it'll just randomly put ones on the screen like that. And obviously you can go around and click them. And the hard part was obviously getting that solution to work uh, like that. So this is a nice little Java GUI, probably one of the more fun projects we had to do because you actually get to work with some of the graphical user interface. All right, so my final assignment, assignment four, this was the last one that we had to complete. It was actually had to be handed in like the last day of exams. And essentially what this one was, was a plagiarism checker. Now what it did was it took two files and it compared the similarity between the files. Now this was actually meant to teach us about linked structures and tree structures. So we did linked lists, um, doubly linked lists, singly list link, uh, linked list tree um, structures, we did word maps, all this kind of crazy stuff, um, just to compare the speed difference between these. Because actually having to compare the similarity between two different documents, um, depending on the way that you do that can take a really long time. So this was a good kind of way to show why you would want to use a certain data structure and set them up. So you can see this is the implementation of a linked list. And we had to do all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, like for example, um, test word map like this. These are just unit tests for certain things. Uh, I'm not going to run this for you guys because I don't even really remember how to do that because it's been a while since I wrote this, but that's kind of what this last one was. Uh, and it just looked at these kind of documents here or sorry, this, where is it? This data here and would compare the similarity between any given documents that you gave it. So anyways, that has kind of been it for all of the projects that I did in my first year of computer science. I know this video was long, but I hopefully you guys got an idea of some of the different things that you guys will be doing in computer science and maybe whether or not your skill level is kind of up to par or if you want to do a little bit of practice before maybe you start next year. With that being said, if you guys like to see more stuff like this and me talking more about what I did during my first year of computer science, definitely let me know down below. And with that being said, I will see you guys in another video.